Hey, it's Anfa. You're watching Anfa Vlog. And today... Today we're gonna do drum synthesis! Wasn't it sub effects? Okay, so today I'll show you how to make a kick drum, a snare drum, a hi-hat, and a crash cymbal all synthesized in Zenit SubFX. It's gonna sound like this. So now, let's jump to our door. I'm gonna add four MIDI tracks called Zen, and I'm gonna change the instrument to Zenit SubFX. I want the LV2 version of the VST1. Okay, it's loaded, actually. I wanted this. Yeah, so we can see what we're doing. Oh, wait a second. I'm gonna root the baud line so it receives the master output from our door, and I also will root it to sidechain compressor, so it's also recorded. Yep, it works. So the session is ready. Let's make a kick drum. I'm gonna name this kick the kick. I'm gonna hit record so it receives MIDI notes. I'm double clicking here to open up the Synths of FX interface. First thing I'm gonna do is make this um, synthesizer react to the drum pads because right now you can see that the, there is a MIDI signal but there is no sound because the drum pads on my keyboard produce signal on channel 10, which is reserved for drums. Now, we have sound, but it's very, very low. So what I'm gonna do is compensate and shift this two octaves up. And I also want to limit this instrument to just one pad, because I want other pads to use different instruments. I'm gonna press the pad that I want to assign for this instrument, and now it's memorized. So when I recall it with this minimum key and the maximum key, it's set. Now, this is the range of the keys. If I hit another pad or any other note, this patch is not gonna make any sounds, which is cool. If you've got your assignment wrong, you can use this little R button, which stands for reset, and it will make the whole keyboard available again. And again, press the pad you want, set minimum, set maximum, and you're set. All right, let's go. And I will use AdSynth. Here's our main window. The first thing I'm gonna do is change the amplitude envelope to make it shorter. Also, I want to disable the forced, re the forced release because that will make our notes always the same length, no matter if we release the pad earlier. Now I can hit it and release it, and the note still has the same length. It's a little bit long. Yeah, that's better. I also want to open up this low-pass filter that is by default a little bit close, so any high-pitched sounds that we'll make will go through unadulterated. Let's open the voice settings. Here's the first voice. It's a sine wave. I'm gonna enable the frequency envelope. By default, it's going from down up. But I want the opposite. I want it to go from higher to lower sounds. And this is how quick it falls. So this is the attack time. How long will the envelope take to fall to the bass pitch? Let's see what happens if I shift this one octave down. Well, that's deep. Okay. I'm gonna open up next voice. And I'm gonna use just pink noise. Well, that sounds very old school. I'm going to enable the amplitude envelope, make it shorter. 
you can hear that the noise itself gets different release times because when the first release is triggered, if I hit the note very quickly and release it, this long release time kicks in. This is actually shortened by the global envelope, which is setting a limit. But still, I don't want forced release. I don't want this. I want just this decay control to control my actual mm, loudness, the length of the sound. By the way, it's quiet. I'm going to turn it up. Oh. Uh, yeah, this is better. So this adds a little click to the kick, so it has more presence to cut for the mix. And I will also add another layer of this kind of stuff to this time, make it some weird waveform. Let's use the power wave and add some random harmonics. And so we have a pretty noisy waveform, and then. I'm going to enable phase modulation. And this might be loud. I'm going to turn it down. Yeah. As you can hear, turning the modulation depth up makes this sound like noise. But it's, you can see that it's repetitive. If I kick, if I hit this kick, you can see that every note has the same pattern, so it's like sampling noise. And that's cool. We like that. Another cool thing about this is that we can make this stereophonic very easily using just one voice. Because with this pink noise, or white noise if you would like to use it, to make this stereophonic I would need to pan this one hard left. Remember that below one, we get random panning every time for every note. So keep it at one or two. And I will have to use another voice and pan this hard right to get a stereo noise. Resetting this back to 64, which is the middle. But with modulation generated noise, I don't need to do this. And I can simply add another unison note. Hear the difference? Stereo, mono. So this generates repeatable noise-like sound that can be easily made stereophonic, which is cool. You can also control the stereo width with this stereo spread. All right, I wanna make this actually shorter because this is Or maybe. Give it a short spike with the decay time, but then let it release quietly. So you can see here and here that we still get some noise, but it's quite interesting. Let's use a bandpass filter. So we don't get this noise so boringly uniform. All right, this is something more interesting. I'm gonna copy this voice, paste it over, and I wanna use a different bandpass filter and different time. I'm gonna use actually a high pass filter because I wanna get some very high stuff in here. I also gonna change the modulating waveform because I don't want the both third and fourth voice to have the same waveform generated. And this is a little bit too loud. Okay. So getting back to the main, to the Edson of global things. And let's see what we can do with the envelope. 
All right, it doesn't need tuning. Um, a very neat trick I want to show you is that Zenit SubFX has something called punch. And this is a function that adds volume spike on the beginning of the note. And to do this without this special thing, you would need a transient mangler or similar kind of effect. Or you could do this with a compressor, but that would also affect the other parts of your sound. And this is like very precise and you can do exactly what you want. You can insert a spike at the beginning. So making the very first few milliseconds of the note much louder. And we have the control over how much louder. So this is without. And you can hear it starting to clip. So I'm going to turn the whole thing down so you can get a perspective. This is just our punch spike. You can hear it's getting, it can get very, very aggressive. There are also some other controls, but I'm not gonna cover them. So what I want to do now is to distort this to make use of the punch, but in a to avoid clipping later, I want to clip this intentionally in a controlled manner. So let's, I've got the distortion and I'm gonna put the drive down. Oh, this is hard still. Uh, I'm gonna open up the Lopez filter so we get all the highs. And I'm gonna make this stereophonic. And you can hear that the width didn't really change because we have this left-right control, not all the way to the left, which is the exact stereo image. If it is in the middle on 64, we actually have mono, and if it is above in 127, we have the right and left channel swapped. And let's play with the derive and compensate with the level. We don't want our eardrums blown. Another thing I want to do is go back and make sure that some things are not taking the note velocity into account because I want to have quite consistent notes. So I'm gonna make this velocity sensing smaller, much smaller. And also I'm going to disable it for this Lopez filter because it was actually closing down, cutting our highs. You can hear it. Now I exaggerated the, the effect of it. You can hear it and you can see it. I'm now hitting very, very slightly and now hardly. I don't want this. You might want this. It's good to know that it's there. Alrighty, this distortion is quite hard. I think I'm gonna actually dial back our punch because it's all the way up. Oh, still very loud. Oh, quite painful actually, could it be? Let's see how high it gets, negative 40 B. Okay, that's not bad. All right, the last thing I wanna to do to this kick right now is an EQ. I'm doing a very specific trick with EQ. I'm using a resonant high pass filter, so this is HP2, and I'm using it to cut down the unneeded low frequencies, but also to emphasize the needed low frequencies, the resonance of the kick, the body of the drum. So, you can hear now it's kind of decapitated. 
sounds more like a snare. It could actually work for a snare. And now I'm increasing Q, so we have a boost right here on the cutoff frequency. And I'm tuning it down. Now this is too loud and it's distorting. So I'm gonna turn this thing down. You can also use this gain knob to compensate. And I will also increase the stages to make this filter sharper, which is also making this peak a little bit more rounded. Because for compensation, the Q, the actual resonance is being decreased because it would become unstable. And at this point, we can also think about if we don't need to tune our drum up or down. So let's see if I tune it up. Or down. The thing is, we need to meet our resonance with the actual bass frequency of our oscillator or a harmonic of this, or it's positioned somewhere, not harmonic because we're using a sine wave, but it's positioned somewhere on the pitch envelope higher. No, this is too low. I'm gonna leave it at the, this point right now. We can also tune it later when we have fresh ears. I want to add some highs to make this kick a little bit brighter and also see if there isn't anything nasty I would like to cut out. We like this. Okay, I don't actually want to cut out anything. I don't want to get scooped mids on this kick. That would be weird and ridiculous. So this is our kick. Let's get to the snare drum. So let's make the snare drum. I have named the track, assigned the MIDI input, and now I have to just assign the right MIDI channel so the pads will work, and assign the right pad. So I hit it, I'm pressing the M, small M for minimum, big M for maximum, and we have set the pad. I will also enable record on our kick drum track so we can play both of them. And you can see both of them receive all the notes, but they filter them by themselves with this thing that we just set up. Okay, let's make our snare drum. So I'm also going to disable the forced release and, oh well, pitch the whole thing up. I could um, change the tuning here. However, there is a difference because this is interpreted as actual changing of the pitch, while this is interpreted as actually shifting the keys pressed. What's the difference? Well, because Zenit Sub FX has a feature called envelope stretch that makes the envelopes longer for lower notes. So if I don't shift the keys, we're gonna have very long envelopes because this is on by default to some extent. So I'm going to shift this two octaves up this is 24 semitones, double arrows. And now we have a different pitch, which is quite usable. And our envelopes are going to have reasonable sensibility. Reasonable sensitivity. Reasonable sensibility. So here's an all. Here is our basic oscillator. I want to make something a little less obvious. It's not what I do usually. Let's try this. I'm going to use a Lopez filler on this wicked. I'm going to also distort this a bit. 
just to make it weird. And then the low pass filter. Okay, I get just a tiny bit of some other harmonic content. Most of that is just thrown away either anyway, but we got something less default. Uh -huh. Okay, this is our frequency envelope. I can see some aliasing distortion happening here. This is the mirroring effect. Actually, we could pitch this up because it's a snare drum. And also make it shorter. However, maybe let's leave this one long because I want to use another voices for different things and some might be longer than we, uh, than the first one. So I don't want to limit myself too much with this envelope, making it too short. So I'm going to just add another envelope here, set the sustain to zero, disable the forced release, make it short. Tuning the envelopes is a huge deal in synthesizing drums. Okay, I'm going to open up the second voice and I will use the noise modulation trick that I did before. So I'm going to open up the oscillator, make it a little bit more interesting, enable phase modulation. You can also use frequency modulation. Whoa, this is loud and long. So let's enable the amplitude envelope, turn the sustain to zero, disable force release. Now down, this is quiet. Uh, this is sounding very not likely. I'm going to tune down the modulation oscillator so they don't have the same, so they're not in phase anymore. So they will be, one will be slightly detuned, so they will be not like going up in sync, but slightly one in a different phase than another. So this noise is less periodic. And I also want to disable the velocity sensing and the frequency, high frequency damping. Yeah, and maybe pitch up our modulating oscillator to make this more dense. And I also want to add a unison voice to make this stereo, of course. Don't know if this has any effect actually, but I'm trying it anyway. All right, so this is our noise. Let's add a bandpass filter. Actually, I'm going to try a different bank of filters. The default one is the analog filters, but there's also state variable filters. They sound a little bit different, and they also differently behave with transients. Okay, let's copy this voice, switch to next voice, paste it over. And now I'm gonna just pitch differently our oscillator and modulator to create a different noise pattern. And also, of course, change the bandpass filter and give it a different release or decay. Interesting. No, I like this one higher better. I like when the snare actually has the high frequencies last longer than the low ones. Okay, I've pasted this one more time. I'm gonna this time add a few harmonics. Mess this up. And
try something narrow. Now this sounds almost like a reverb. Let's try it this way. Okay. What I'm gonna do now is, of course, add some punch. Well, that should cut it. And of course, disable the velocity sensing for the filter. So quiet notes are quiet and not low passed. I also gonna tune, turn this up so I have less velocity sensing. So hitting the note softly doesn't make as soft notes. Alrighty. Now, for the distortion, I'm gonna turn the level down. Let's make it stereo, full width. Let the highs go through. And now, the pre and post gain. Well, that's a lot, but we can mix this back with the original signal. Now I'm gonna make sure that the original and the distorted signal have very similar loudness, so it's more easy to mix them together while having the same loudness all the way along, so it's easier to hear the difference. So I'm turning all the way to the dry signal, and I'm compensating with the level for the wet. Which is weird that they get louder in the middle for some reason. Alrighty, this should work. Let's add an EQ. And one more time, just like with the kick. A resonant hypers filter. Two more stages. Higher Q. <laughs> this sounds familiar. Oh, this is loud. Sorry. Oh, still loud. Let's hear our kick and snare together. Yeah, this is our resonance. Mm, okay, I'm lacking the highs. A lot. All right. I think I'm gonna make the kick drum a little louder. And also, maybe... Huh, which? Weird. I'm lacking the punch in the kick. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's better. All right. This is our snare. Let's go to the hi-hat. Okay, so let's again assign our drums channel. Pick the pad, minimum, maximum, and it's assigned. <laughs> I'm gonna turn this up, two octaves, maybe even three. And for hi-hat, I'm going to use pad synth. So, pad synth needs to regenerate the samples, as you probably know already, if you watched my previous videos. And what I'm gonna do is <clears throat> put some weird stuff in here, generally, that's the, that's the idea. And then add some distortion. Quantization distortion works nicely to even out the spectrum. Then I hit apply. 
and play it softly because it might be loud. All right, let's make it a little bit quieter. And this is supposed to be a pretty metallic harmonic series or inharmonic, but it is harmonic. But we m can make it inharmonic with these thingies, like the sine function, which makes the harmonics shift out of their positions. Let's also see what happens if I make this basic thingy narrower, but add a few more. Wow. And also distort them a bit. This is the stretch function. Is it? I don't even know the names of these things. All right, I think this is nice. Let's go to the envelopes, levels and stuff and change the low pass to the high pass. Let's make it a little bit now steeper. Gonna turn it to three stages. Now let's make it shorter. So the sustain all the way down, forced released off. And I also want to try to, yeah, pitch this down. Maybe even lower. Ah. Our high pass filter is affected by the velocity of the notes. Let's play it. It's quite long. Yeah, this is better. We can also play around with trying to make a pitch envelope. Uh, this will probably sound very unnatural. So make it even extremely short and extremely delicate or not at all. Okay. I want to equalize this hi-hat because I don't really, I'm not satisfied with the timber. I'm going to use another high pass filter maybe. Make it sharp. Make it resonant. Yeah, I like this resonance. It makes me feel that the hi-hat is more like a physical object than just some sound floating in space. I also want to try adding some high frequencies or they're boosting them. but this has to be done softly. Okay, I think I will add a very subtle reverb. I'm gonna switch to random, because the random, when turned down way low with the room size, sounds very, very metallic. I'm also gonna disable the damping, and you can, See and hear how awesome this is for metallic sounds. Ah, get back. Okay, here's our hi-hat. Oh. I think I'm gonna decrease the velocity sensing, which means turning it up and velocity a bit. Ah. This is still loud and piercing. And of course, I'm gonna turn down the initial delay and the time. 
Oh yeah, more like this. Make it very subtle. This is without. This is with. Maybe tiny much more. Okay. Let's get to the crash. Hitting the pad, assigning it. Here we go. For crash, I will also use pad synth. And it's amazing capabilities of making rich enharmonic sounds. Let's go for this chirp waveform. Let's add some higher frequency content and then smash it with distortion. Well, sorry, this is loud. I'm turning it down. Also, disable the velocity sensing for the filter right away. Turn it up. And this sounds very harsh. Well, let's make this narrower. Add a few bunch more. Whoa, yeah. I know what I forgot to do. I forgot to pitch this up. One, two, three octaves. Yes, now it sounds like it should. Which doesn't necessarily mean that it sounds like we want. Let's make this less harmonic, shall we? Oh yeah. Oh, this sounds almost like a tone. That's not unacceptable. Okay, let's see what we can do with this. I'm gonna tune it down. Uh -huh. Oh. Ah, I changed the high, the type of filter to high pass and it's all the way up, so it's actually making it silence. Let's see what we can do with this high pass filter. Let's give it some decay. Disable the forced release. Make it louder. Not as much louder. Well, kinda. Yeah, I like this lower octave more. I'm going to now do a little trick. Uh, which is, okay, first I'm gonna use the reverb, the room reverb, which pretty nicely simulates resonances like in a metallic sheets when we're in low room signs. For some reason it jumps back to the middle sometimes. Let's hear just the reverb. Let's let the highs through. Lower the damping. Yeah, I like this. I'm just gonna make the initial delay shorter. Let's mix it back with the original. I'm going to copy this reverb, switch to the next slot, enable it for part one, and paste it. It doesn't refresh right along. Now the random reverb has this problem that it's really random and every time you load this patch it's gonna sound differently. But it's gonna follow some pattern that you set. Let's add another one. This time, not room. But free verb type. Let's make it very low room size. Of 
For some reason, it's... Focusing in the left channel, while they are perfectly in the center. No idea why. Let's change the room size. Set them back to the middle. Okay. And this is the trick I wanted to show you. I'm going to add a dynamic filter. This is an effect that does something called auto wah, but it can also do some other things. It has an LFO. It can change the filter cutoff frequency depending on the volume of the signal that it's being fed. In our case, we can do some nice stuff. I want something that will open up when the drum is hit and then release, fall down. Because the symbols just happen so to resonate the lower frequency energy for a longer time than they do for the higher. And this is another little thing that helps to simulate this. And it just sounds good, in my opinion. Okay, one last thing. I'm going to add an EQ. And I'm going to use a high pass, because there's some low frequency stuff that we don't need. I can even cut it rather aggressively, because we won't probably hear the lows in the track. I actually wonder if this is not too long. Maybe I should make the reverb tails shorter. I want to introduce a little resonance. Yeah, somewhere there. Another one at some highs. Because this made it very dim. Now I also want to hunt for some nasty resonances that are Okay, I'm going to go back and make the reverb tails shorter. I know this is not very realistic, but it's going to better work for our track. We can also make this longer if we want later. So this is it. This is our drum kit. In the future episode, I'm going to probably continue this as a track and make basses and pads and maybe leads and some other sounds, maybe even incorporate recording guitars and vocals, if you're interested. And because, well, I think it's quite natural to show you around all these things while making music, because they are not existing just to make kicks and snares, they are exist to make music with this. All right. So the whole session uh, for Ardor 5, as well as the individual patches, will be downloadable. The link is in the description. And if you have any questions or suggestions about what I should cover next, leave them in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.